Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Yale City Baptist Church worship service today. As we give God glory, give God praise for you being a part of our service today. We thank you so very, very much for that. As I want to lift up this wonderful woman of God that's standing next to me that I love so dearly. Amen. As she begins to uh, bring the word of God for us uh, today, let's pray together. Father, we thank you so very, very much for this moment in time that you already knew that we were going to experience. And an experience is what we really desire today. An experience from the Lord today that the Holy Spirit would move in such a mighty and powerful way that we won't even be able to stand in your presence. All we'll be able to do is humble ourselves and bow before you today. So I lift reverend up to you right now, Father, in the name of you. We thank you for the woman of God that she is. For your anointing has really truly rest upon her life. I thank you that you've already filled her belly with a word today. God, our hearts are waiting, are waiting just for the word of God to hit our hearts today. I pray that we will honor the word and that we will honor you today as we listen to the word as it comes forth today. It will break off every chain and every stronghold off of every life. Somebody will be saved. Somebody will be delivered. Somebody will be set free today. Once again, we thank you. Strengthen her as only you can. Hold her up by your mighty power. And we give you glory and praise for everything that's going to transpire. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Now, John, our music uh, minister, is going to come and give us our last inspirational song. And after that, we'll stand for our hymn of affirmation, whatever that is that Reverend is going to uh, desire today. And after that, we're going to get into the word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Earlier this week, God dropped a word real heavy in my spirit. And it was very simple. He said, don't doubt me now. Uh -huh. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> we think that when God gives us a word, it's destined for us. And it was crazy. Fifteen minutes after um, he had gave me the word, I had to go and share it with somebody else who was who really needed to hear it. So I realized it wasn't even just for me. It might not even be for me, but I had received it. So um, just be, be encouraged with this, this next song. Look to me, my child. Won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Say, look to me, my child. Won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Say, don't look at the waves and don't look at the storm. Just keep your eyes on me and you'll be safe from all harm. Said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Said look to me, my child. Won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Said, don't look at the fire, don't look at the flames. Just keep your eyes on me and you won't even feel the pain. Said, it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Said, look to me, my child. Oh, won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Said, don't look at what you see. Don't listen to what you hear. Just keep your eyes on me and you'll have nothing else to fear. Said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. 
said, look to me, my child. Won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said, it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child. Said, look to me, my child. Won't you look to me, my child? Oh, I said it'll all be over in just a while. Said it'll all be over in just a while. Said it'll all be over in just a while. So look to me, my child.
will join me, please, in the book of Psalms. We're going to be in the 27th number of Psalms, starting at verse 13. If you have, if you are joining us today for the first time, or maybe watching this as recording for the first time, that is our war cry that you heard before. It's what the Lord has given us, and we want to fight by this word. This is what we have as a weapon. It's a weapon. This is the only weapon that we should be having in the body of Christ. The word of God, because it is able. It is able to fend off any enemy. It's able to protect us. So we're in Psalms, the 27th number of Psalms, starting at verse 13. When you have arrived, would you please acknowledge by saying, by, by saying amen? Amen. amen? amen. Those of you that are watching, we're giving you a chance. We pray that you have your sword, which is the spirit of God, so that we can study this word together. Psalms 27, starting at verse 13. I'll be reading from the New King James translation of the Bible. And it says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed mm -hmm. that I would see the goodness of the Lord in, in the, the land, land of the, the living. Right. Verse 14, wait on the, wait Lord. On the Lord, be, be of good, good courage, right. and he Thou shall strengthen your yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, I say, on the Lord. We thank God for the feet of his word and he also the power that's in this word you may be Hallelujah. In the presence of our life changing king. Hallelujah. If you have not surmised or, or, or figured out what the title is already, it's wait, wait on, on the Lord. Lord. <laughs> wait on the Lord. I know it says about being of good, uh, uh, good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, but the Lord wants us to wait on him. Listen, I, 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 as I prepare for this word, you know, last uh, in March, I, I brought a word to us about. I shall not want. I, right. I hope that yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. remember yeah. that word, yeah. Yeah. that you know that God that provided everything for us. Yeah. He's more than enough for us. He is the God of more than enough. Yeah. And, and, and we shall not want. We should not have any want in yeah. our life, yeah. no lack in our life, because he is the source of everything for us. Right. All we have to do is rely upon him and trust in him. Well, this is going to be a little prelude to that, y'all. Right. Last week, I think I talked a little bit about if I can even bring it to mind right now. Promise or compromise. Lord, uh, huh? Promise or compromise. Ain't that something? Right. Promise or compromise. Thank you. Because, see, if you're going to wait on the Lord, it's because you don't, you, you're not going to compromise, but you got a promise from him. Yeah. You're waiting with expectation. Can I give you some definitions of wait, first of all? Because, right. see, too many people know it, about a definition of wait, of what they think a wait is. Can I help a, a little bit? Wait is to stay or rest in expectation mm -hmm. with patience. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. See, somebody says, well, I'm just going to stay. Yeah. I ain't gonna expect nothing. And by the way, I'm impatient. I'm only gonna stay for so long. All right. Also means to stop, <coughs> to remain stationary, suspend. Okay, now I want you to know that I didn't go to Webster, I went to the King James Bible Dictionary. Okay? Not to depart. Okay? Now, let me show you what the Lord said to me about this. See, this ain't the kind of wait like when we was in the military, just hurry up and wait. <laughs> okay? And what we meant by the hurry up and wait is just idle time. And we knew that wasn't going to be, you know, we got to hurry. You, you know, everything had to be done with an urgency, right? And so we had to hurry up and wait. In other words, what the Lord gave, when, when we had, well, when we, we want us to wait for something, or they tell us to hurry. We knew that we could hurry to get there, but we still were going to have to wait, wait. wait and be idle, in other words, right? Yeah. And we're not just biding time when we're talking about waiting on the Lord. That's what the hurry up and wait was right. in the military. You're just biding time, right. you know. You're just being idle. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about not a, a wait to where I have a weight of expectation. Right. All right. With patience. Yeah. Number two, the other way. Uh -huh. Here we go. Attend to. Uh -huh. Y'all know that one, don't you? Yeah. Remember they used to be like waiters and waitress? Uh -huh. And they yeah. would just stand there and uh -huh. wait on you. Uh -huh. 
you know, uh -huh. attend to you. Yeah. We call them what, service now? Is that what we call them, service? Yeah. We call them service now? Hmm. We call them service now. Yeah. To attend to, be submit, submissive in my attendance. You know, while I'm waiting and while I'm there, I'm being submissive. Y'all listening to me? That I'm looking watchfully, that I am ready to serve and obey. Now, what I want to say to you here is the weight that we're talking about waiting on the Lord. First of all, I got to be still. That's the first thing. In other words, I don't move till he say move because I'm waiting on him. Uh, just like when the pillar of cloud and uh, uh, and the and the fire, the pillar of fire with with, with the with the with the children of e uh, uh, of uh, Israel when they come out of Egypt, they didn't move without it. They waited on the Lord. Now, also we need to understand this: that I can't be saying that I'm waiting when I'm sitting there saying, "Man, uh, you know what I'm talking about," because exactly that's what they did, did they not? The children of Israel murmured and complained. Yes. And you see what happened. Uh -huh. So I, this is where I say when we talk about this weight on the Lord, it's got to be where I'm staying and I'm resting in him. Uh -huh. Okay? Yeah. I'm also waiting with an expectation because he made me a promise and he's going to fulfill it. Right. So I look for that. I look for him to fulfill it no matter how long it takes. That's right. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Yeah. You know why? Because I don't mind waiting. That's right. Now, if you mind waiting, yeah. then you're not waiting. Come on, Reverend. You know what I'm saying? That's right. If you mind waiting, you're not, you, waiting. You're not really waiting. Right. Listen, why is it that, and I know, see, I'm not used to this. I'm going to say this. One of the things that bothered me when I went home to visit before my parents died, I took my father to an appointment. And this appointment was at this time, and I say, because I'm conditioned, mm -hmm. you got to be there 15 minutes prior, they're not going to see you. Because I've been conditioned like that yeah. for over 20 some odd years, yeah. okay? Yeah. And so, my father's elderly, and they already read and everything, but they knew something I didn't know. They could get there late, and they still were going to be seen. Yeah. Because I'm getting there early, and I'm expecting to be seen at his appointment time, he gets seen two hours later. Wow. Now you know I'm sitting there waiting what? <laughs> Impatiently. Right, right, right. To the point where I done went up to the desk yeah. and demand to see the doctor. Yeah. There's no way you can be that bagged up. And if you right. bagged up that like that, you should have rescheduled me. Right. You should have foreseen that coming and you should have called me after we done drove, you know, yeah. X amount of miles to get there. I wasn't used to that, y'all. I was used to, I'm supposed to be there. The most time I can wait past my time, I get there 15 minutes early. By the time the, my time come, I'm already ready to be seen. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting impatiently. Mm -hmm. My father's sitting there waiting very patiently because you know what? He was conditioned for right. it. Mm. That no matter what time his appointment was, he knows he's going to be seen two hours early, right. later. Mm -hmm. wow. And so you know what they did? They go like that. And I was just so upset about that. So this is what the Lord is saying to us today. See, while I'm waiting, I got to be watchful. Uh -huh. I got to be looking. And by the way, I'm not just idly waiting. I'm doing something. You know, too many of us like that. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord, and I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me what to do. I, I can't do nothing until he tell me. Well, you're supposed to be doing the last thing he told you. And you, you ain't doing that. Right. I'm just saying now, uh -huh. because this is the thing. God is going to show you, if he shows you something, that he's going to prepare for you. you got to wait on him for that. Right. But in the midst of that waiting, he's going to show you something else that yeah, you Lord, shouldn't be doing. doing. All right. Because we don't serve a God that's idle. On, now, this is the thing about the wait thing. See, we don't, let's not be focused on the fact that the waiting means for me to be still and, and ain't nothing going to happen, you know, until this time. And so I, I got to wait for that. I got to be w w prepared and waiting for that. Yes, but in the midst of that, God is making, having something 
you to do or say that's moving you toward that what you got, what he got you waiting on. You better hear me in this right now, because I know this to be true. When God has promised me something, he's given me a promise. And Bishop, thank you, Holy Ghost. Bishop, just like he gave you a promise and he gave you a vision, in the midst of that, he done told you, though, you're waiting on that, on that to come to pass. You're waiting, but in the process, you're doing something, right. and he has you to do things that's moving toward that, that's right. going to prepare you for right. that. Right. And I'm reminded of that because the kind of doors that are open yes, and the kind of doors that are shut. Yes, and so in that, I want you to be of good courage yes, and wait yes, and ma'am. continue to wait. wait on the Lord. Let me tell you why he said, why does he need to renew my strength? Well, I mean, no, not not my well, shit. That's my next part. Why does he need to strengthen my heart? Come on, mm. Can I tell you why? Yeah. Get your Bibles right quick, because we're going to do a little traveling right, right. quick, because I want to travel real quick. I want to travel real quick. I'm talking to those that may not have that. And those of you that's speaking into your not brick and mortar ones that you're speaking into, it, you ought to be able to find this real quick. The first thing I want you to do is look for uh, uh, Luke 6, chapter, verse 45. See, he needs to strengthen our hearts because we need a renewed heart, by the way. See, I need a heart that has no despair. Now, the heart that's content, a heart that's encouraged, not a one that's discouraged. So he needs to strengthen my heart, okay? The Lord needs to do this. Luke 6, 45. I know you done beat me there already, right? Amen. Okay, so I'm there right now. Can I read? Yeah. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. But out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Yeah. Sometimes we say some things, right, Come that on, show that our hearts need Come to be strengthened. Right. Sometimes we yeah. speak against what God has yes, said and the Come things on, that we're supposed to be Come waiting on. on, on, on we on. speak against that. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Because what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth yeah. do speak. Yeah. Go with me right quick to Proverbs 4.23. We're going to go back a little bit. Proverbs 4.23, because you need to hear this. My heart needs to be strengthened. You know why? Why? So you're going to tell us why. (laughs) Why? You there? Proverbs 4.23, are you there? Mm -hmm. I may be moving a little fast for the the person. So Proverbs Mm -hmm. 4.23. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of life. Wow. This is why my heart got to be strengthened. Yeah. See, I heard something, uh, uh, well, I, I seen something, you know, folks were talking about it. You know, I have to shut some things down in my mm-hmm. mind. Because if, if, I sh- if I don't shut it down, it begins to become something that comes out of my mouth. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying I to do. you? And so with that, some things I have to shut down. Let me say something, though. See, the Lord knows our hearts because, believe it or not, this is what God deals with. Yes, ma'am. I ain't got to that part yet. This is what he deals with. We said, we, like, uh, last Saturday, was that last Saturday? Last Saturday, we were at the uh, uh, um, uh, Mother Daughter Tea, and the pastor was talking about the, the, the letter, um, I can't think of the letter. It's a Hebrew letter. But per, per, is it Tet? I, I can't remember what the name, I, I, I don't speak Hebrew anyway. But anyway, <laughs> this particular Hebrew letter, they say that if you open up the person's heart, Hmm. And it's the letter for Yah, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's the letter for God, for Yah. Mm-hmm. That it that that it, it looks, yo, know, when they when they do a survey, when they open it, it looks like this letter. Wow. And that this is supposed to be the blueprint that God done put that our heart belongs to mm-hmm. Him. Mm-hmm. And, and, and let, me, let me go a little farther though with oh, that. Wow. Uh, we, we, let's go right quick to uh first Samuel 16, 7. Okay? Mm-hmm. First Samuel 16, 7, since we're in the Old Testament, right? You go back a couple more pages to your left. Go to your left. Go to your left. Those of you speaking to your Google mic and tell them. Uh, 1 okay. Samuel 16, 7. Uh-huh. It'll take you right there. But it's nothing like thumbing some pages. This way you learn your books of the Bible in order. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it, it hurts my heart when I find out that there's uh, people of God that don't even know what mm-hmm. books are in the Old Testament, which ones are in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. You ain't even got to study the whole Bible. They just go to the table of contents. Right. They in order. Yeah. The yeah. table of contents. And matter of fact, can I say something? This is a pinpoint. 
Don't be ashamed to use your table of contents. Right. That's, right. That's, That's the right. purpose of a, yeah. listen, right. anybody yeah. that reads know the whole purpose of a table of contents is to get you somewhere faster yeah. in the book. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We try to impress people, you know, like, you know, go somewhere and you just, and you still thumb and ain't yeah. found it yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> when you could have went to the table of contents, found it <laughs> just like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, are we there? Yeah. First Samuel yeah. 16, 7. Y'all know what, it's a, fami- it's a familiar. Pastor? Yeah. <laughs> A familiar passage to some, but the Lord, and this is about when Samuel went to anoint, when God sent him to anoint the king that was going to take King mm-hmm. Saul's place, and Samuel's the man of God here. But the Lord said to Samuel, because Jesse had marched all his little sons by, all his sons that he liked, that he wants to be king. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. You come there, and, oh, this right here, you know, he's the smart one. He gets straight A's and B's. He should be king. This one here is the one that's an athletic proudness. He can fight good. He can run fast. He should be king. He gonna run from the enemy fast too. Anyway. <laughs> verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not, y'all hear this? Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man see. Hallelujah. That's Amen. good news. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. What is God saying here? He says that he don't look at what you do as more as much as he looks at why you're doing what you do. Right. That's why when you're waiting on the Lord, you just can't be putting on no front. Because God is looking at why you're waiting. Why you're waiting. Are you waiting because the Lord say wait? Or are you waiting because you're bargaining with the Lord? Right. I, I heard this right now. Mm-hmm. Are you waiting because God say, I love the Lord and I'm going to obey him? Or are you waiting because, you know what, if I wait and I look like I'm waiting, I can fool everybody else that, you know, I'm good. I, hey, me and God, we good. Mm-hmm. God only honors pure motives that's right. because he looks mm-hmm. at the heart. That's See, that's why we don't walk by sight. We're right. supposed to walk by right. faith. Hey. We're supposed to walk by, and walking by faith is what God done told us, by the way. Yeah. Not just any old thing I want to throw up in the air. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. See, you, you, we like to try God in this faith thing yeah. when we already know that he was the one created faith, by the way. Right. But listen, we want to try God in this faith thing where we go there and say, you know, hey, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to step out on faith, you know. Ooh, we, ooh, we, Lord. I'm, I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to go and do this right here because I believe God. Gonna make it happen for me. Mm-hmm. That's not faith. That's not faith. Faith is when God done told you to go and do something. Right. And you can't see it, right. you can't phantom it, on, you right. can't figure it out, right. or none of that, and you go do what God said. Right. Mm-hmm. That's faith. That is faith. See, I hear people talking about blind faith. What is bl- 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 blind faith? Y'all want to walk with me just a little bit? Yes, right. And Matthew right. 6, 21 talks about that in the heart is where I treasure lies. Yes. Let's write that right. down. I'm not going to go there. Okay. okay? But let me tell you something else that's being said about the heart. Go to Jeremiah 17, 9. Let me stay in the Old Testament for just a minute, okay? That's all right with y'all. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, you know, folks want to stay in the New Testament, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and the Old Testament is a foreshadowing, telling you what's... What, what the New Testament is going to be about and what's happening right now. All right. It's the, mm-hmm. Listen, the Old Testament is, is showing you error. Shows you the plan and shows you the error. Mm-hmm. So that you don't keep, don't you don't make the same mistake. Mm-hmm. Now that's, out, that's outdated. Well, if you look at the whole Bible outdated according to the way when it was right. written. Yeah. But I'm reminded that this is the living word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. A li- the, it's a living word. Yeah. It applies to every situation and circumstance, yeah. no matter what creed, color, nationality, no matter what language you speak, That's no right. matter what dispensation we're in, no matter what culture we're in, no matter what millennial we're in, it's still the word of God. And the Bible says that the heaven and earth will pass away before uh-huh. one jot or tittle is uh-huh. changed. Mm. All right. So I know it's a living word. Y'all joining me in Jeremiah 17? Amen. This is a very familiar passage. If you haven't, you ought to hear this right here. This is what the Lord said about the heart. Hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things and mm-hmm. desperately wicked who can know it. This is why I have to have a heart that's strengthened. For those of you who like to say, you know, God knows my heart. That's the real truth. That's the truth of everything. He knows it. 
Stop throwing that cliche out there because he really do know it. And he's saying to you that it's deceitful and desperately wicked that you need a new heart, like it says in Ezekiel 11th chapter. Mm -hmm. You need a heart of flesh, a new heart that he's going to put in you. That's what he says to us. Look at verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Yes, I do. I test the mind. There yeah. you go. Yeah. I, and, and even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. Yeah. Listen, the Lord wants us to wait on him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, that if I wait on the Lord, there's something that's going to be there for me. Yeah. Let me tell you what I found out about this wait thing also. Jeremiah, uh, did I say, that? I read 1710, right, yes. already? Yeah. So look at this right here. You know, uh, and Ezekiel, I write this down, Ezekiel 11 talks about that new heart, how he takes away that stony heart and uh -huh. gives you a new heart, and then yeah. he also gives you a do right spirit, a new spirit as well. Mm -hmm. now, now listen, though. When I look at this word about waiting, about how we wait and everything, right? Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we wait and we be anxious in our waiting. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah. I know I'm right about that. And to the point that sometimes we get worrisome. Yeah. Worrisome. Can I use yeah. JD as an example? John David, I'm going to use you as an example. You know, uh, they, <laughs> I, I, my grandson, they tell him, say, John David, we're going to take you to a certain place. We're going to go a certain place. This is for all of y'all, not just John David. John David got a reason. We don't. Uh -oh. Okay. John David has an excuse. Uh, we don't. But they tell us, John David, we're going to take you somewhere. <laughs> you can't tell him that. Hmm. You know why? Why? Because every minute, uh -huh. we're going so-and-so. We're going so-and-so. We're going so-and-so. We're going so-and-so. We're going today. No, not today, John David. Yeah, we're going today. No, John David, we're not going today. Yes, we are going today. You said we're going today. <laughs> okay? Now, he's anxious. You, you, me, me too. I'm gonna put myself in that category. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Adult type. Uh huh. God say, this is what I promise you. And you know what we just say? God, when we gonna do this? When we gonna get there? When we gonna get leave? When we gonna be there? How long we gonna be? When, when we gonna go? When 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 uh -huh. when we? Uh -huh. And we listen. Our prayer life consists of. Uh -huh. uh, <coughs> all right. Yeah. Our prayer life consists of it. Uh -huh. You go, listen. That's the only reason you praise God, because he gave you a promise. Uh, How about praising him for what he already done? Yeah. How about praising him for what he's doing right now? You can't praise God for what he's doing right now. You can't see what he's doing right now, because your mind is so fixed on that. You really ain't waiting on God. You sitting there trying to hurry up God, but I heard a song that said, you can't hurry God. You just have to wait. You have to trust him, give him time, no matter how long it takes, because he's a God that you can't hurry. Mm. He'll be there. You don't have to worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. See, I remember that song, because I remember a time when I was in my youthfulness, in my young Christian walk. I'm hurrying God. Then it got to a point where I said, no, you can't hurry, baby. You, you, you wasting your time and your energy. You can't make, listen. Here's a pinpoint. Some of you crying. I said it. Whining. Clanging snot. <laughs> yes, you are. In your prayer time, trying to hurry God. And God is saying that if the kind of weight on the Lord is that it's going to take some patience and some expectation. You know, I've seen this thing where it says, you know, like, uh, uh, when 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 God when God hasn't opened the door yet, praise Him in the hallway. Y'all ever seen yeah. that? Yeah. Y'all ever seen that? You know, in the hallway is a place of waiting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hallway is yeah. a place of waiting because you're waiting for that door that that you suppose that God is opening for you. Well, can I say something? I bet I I, I promise you that if you praise Him in the hallway, you may see a whole lot of doors swing wide open. All right. Mm. I'm not talking about them ones that's cracked. And you pushing your foot now, and God trying to close it, and you got your foot in there to keep it from, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I said, wait on the Lord. Well, maybe the Lord will get tired of holding this door, and I can just stick my whole leg on in. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something. You're not waiting on the Lord. Because yeah. you know what he's going to do? He's going to renew your strength. Go to Isaiah 40, 31. I know y'all thought that was going to be my focal passage. 
Hmm. But it's not. I'm in the Old Testament, y'all. Y'all like being in the Old Testament? Yeah. I love yeah. the Old Testament because you know what? It tells me about what's going to happen next. Yeah. Isaiah 40. Matter of fact, can I tell you something? I tell you. I, the, the, the Old Testament tell you about something that already happened now so you can see it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not just back then, but it happened in your now that I'm past yeah. tense. Yeah. All right. Isaiah 40, 31. Very familiar passage, right? I know y'all don't even have to turn there. Y'all can quote it, right? Mm. No, let me see what you're talking about first of all. So speak right. Of I say I can quote. This is what happens to those that wait on the Lord. All right. Those that wait on the Lord. Those that wait on the Lord. This is what happens. Isaiah 30, uh, 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord, mm -hmm. that means wait on his instruction, uh -huh. wait on his timing, right. wait on his perfect will to be yeah. done, don't want to operate in his permissive will, they shall renew their strength. Yeah. He just told you he'll strengthen your heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, if he strengthen your heart, that's renewing your that's right. physical strength. Yeah. Your spiritual strength as well. It should, it should be helping you with your faith level mm -hmm. if he renew your strength. Look what he said. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. And they will walk Amen. and won't faint. Listen here. I, I don't know about you. I think my running days are over. I pray it's not because I just want, I ask the Lord and I said it just as plain as I could that when he give this body of believers, when he make room for us, when he rebel us, and he make room for us, I don't care how big it is, I want to run around at least three times. Come on. All right. Amen. All right. Listen, I said I want to run around at least three times uh -huh. on the first Sunday. All yeah. right. <laughs> On the second Sunday, I want to run around at least six times. Y'all better hear me right now. Right. On the third Sunday, I want to bet and run around at least nine times. Uh, hey, 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 because I know he can renew my strength. Right. On the fourth Sunday, I want to beat them during the 12 right now. Uh, listen, I, listen, I'm saying this for one reason. If he go renew my strength, yeah. I want to be able to like, really like an eagle. I want to soar. I want to soar. Uh -huh. Listen. Then I should be able to run around that scale. Yeah. I'll be able to run around it and not get tired. I sit there and I watch my granddaughter. Yeah. Lord have mercy. I know for a, a fact as I speak into the atmosphere right now. She be running. We keep saying she gonna run track. This baby gonna run hard for the Lord. Yeah. Hey, show yeah. her the She gonna run hard for the Lord and she ain't gonna get tired. That child is two years old and she runs and I never hear her panting. I ain't never seen a pet. And I done took her to the park. And she done ran. You understand what I'm saying, brother? I mean running. Continuously. Somebody said long distance. I said, Lord, let her run for you. Let her run for the, Let her run a long life for you. Let her run for with a young life. And hey, listen, he would renew your strength. All I'm asking is just for an eight odor of the poorer strength. Amen. That's all I need. I'm going to run on and not be weary. And I'm going to walk and not faith. This is what happens when I wait. Oh, no, See, he gives me the strength that's like no other. Yeah. Strength that's defied. Yeah. You know, it, it's the fire bulb. Oh. Listen, I know that y'all ain't never had experienced this. Some of y'all, anybody think they weak? Mm -hmm. I raise my hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to say it again. Anybody feel like they weak? Mm -hmm. I'm going to raise both my hands. Amen. <laughs> Okay, y'all don't want to uh, admit you weak? I am. Listen, he said in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. 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 Yeah. Listen, I, I don't mind saying I'm weak. That's right. If That's his strength, go, listen, if his strength will raise up in me and be perfect. Yes. See, Thank the Bible God. tells me to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yeah. See, see, not see not by my might yeah. and not by my power. It's got to be by his spirit. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord tells me. And see, that I told you I'm just trying to get our focus off. Of, Y'all don't understand what I'm saying here. Trying to get our focus off of us. Listen, we're just mere feeble humans. You need to understand that. The Bible says we ain't nothing but butt dust. I mean, no, no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> nothing but, but dust. dust. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> we're nothing but dust. Amen. 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 
<laughs> that was a joke. A little girl said, said you know, a little girl, they woke up and say, they was teaching us Sunday school and Sunday school to say, you know, we're nothing but dust. And she went home and told her, her parents that, that the teacher said that we're butt dust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Psalm 37 9. See, I gotta be reminded, just like JD is anxious, there's nothing wrong with being anxious with expectation, okay? But there's a such thing as having a nervous anxiousness. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Okay, the kind of uh, the kind of the kind of anxiousness where you really are uh, on the teetering on the unbelief yes. yeah. and, and, and teetering on the doubting, okay? Uh -huh. Listen, at the moment you sense that, please go into prayer and ask the Lord, say, Lord, renew my strength right now. Lord, strengthen my heart right now. Because he will do it. Listen, it's nothing that God, listen, God understands because he knows us, okay? Mm -hmm. He knows the level of faith that we are all at. And he wants to build our faith in him. But we got to also be willing to, but listen, ain't no sense in you because uh, uh, you're just being transparent with yourself. Because right. God already knows. Right. But you got to have a willingness. That's coming back to humility again. Yeah. To say, you know, Lord, I, I, I'm having a problem believing this. Help my unbelief. unbelief. Mm -hmm. And he will. He will. That's why when you first become a Christian, you see the blessing of the Lord manifest faster. Mm -hmm. Y'all ever know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. seem like, you, you be like, ooh, we, you get some. And then somewhere along about, I say, the one year mark, you don't see them so much. So now, you know, you got to really operate in faith and you don't see it so much. Mm -hmm. That's because God is growing your faith. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. How do you keep how you keep up and don't get weary? You go there, you keep studying your word of God and keep learning more about the God right. of the Word. Right. Psalm 37, 9. Y'all done beat me there already? Yeah, man. I'm so glad because um I'm gonna be right there with you. Psalms 37, 9. That's the wrong page. Look what it says right here. What happens when I wait? For evildoers, that's what part of our problem is, too. We have a problem waiting. We're watching the evildoers. Mm. For evildoers shall be cut off. For those who wait on the Lord, they will shall inherit the earth. Do y'all see that? Uh-huh. Do y'all see that? Yeah. Well, turn, stay in that same chapter right quick and go to verse 34. Okay. See, when I get this inheritance from the Lord, he's talking about I'm going to inherit the earth. The Bible and I already told us that God gave the earth to the sons of men. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you didn't already inherit it. The problem is you're not operating it. Uh -huh. I'm talking about waiting on the Lord. See, you try to operate it in your own authority. <sighs> what I mean about your own authority? Well, God didn't give you authority. You don't recognize that you're under authority. Right. So you start doing and making plans according to what you want and the way you see it. Rather than consulting the God that gave you the authority right. to right. do it as he saw fit for it and how he purposed it. I know I'm right about that. I know I am. See, when I when I wait on the authority that he has already given me and the dominion that he has already given me, I'm going to see others fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm not going to rejoice in it, right. but I'm going to see them when they fall. Because, see, sometimes we got our focus on others too much. Yeah. I remember when I first got saved, and it seemed like we were struggling, and we were because I had to learn the principle of tithing and offering, that there was a requirement of me, that I didn't take what I thought that I earned, that it was mine, and I do what I want with it. Mm -hmm. I had to understand that I belonged to the Lord, and everything that was affiliated, associated, related to me belonged to him as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I had to submit that. Well, before then, I was trying to do it on my own. And I'm sitting there watching, you know, the, the, the quote, unquote, evildoer, <laughs> right? And they got two and three mm -hmm. Lincoln, right. Cadillac, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't look like they hurting for nothing, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm like, Lord, these folks don't serve you. But I'm serving you. Right. Mm -hmm. why, why they look like, and Lord said, you just looking with your natural eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't know how much debt them folks in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You don't know how many bowls of cereal they got to eat mm. rather than eating a balanced meal. Right. Mm. I'm telling you, this is what he showed me. 
he had to show me this because I'm sitting there, I'm on this, I'm watching this. Right. And I'm like, you know, and then you know, let me tell you something. When you hear folks bragging about what they got, right. when you hear folks bragging, when they struggle. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah they are. Because they're trying to convince themselves right. everything is okay. Right. Uh-huh. That's right. You better hear me. Right. You better stop listening to mm. that. that. That's whoop tickets. That's what they used to call them back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I'm dating myself right now. We call them selling whoop tickets. You ever heard that before? Yeah. You sit yeah. there just talking, you know, a whole lot of noise. Right. Once you yeah, you're trying to. But they're trying to convince yeah, themselves. That's that self-care thing. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm building up my self-esteem with lies. <laughs> <laughs> you build, uh, amen. you build up your self-esteem with lies, and there's a plug right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for using that young woman right there. You better get your eyes off of everybody that's on social media because that is a facade. Yeah. Most are right. uh, facade. That is the one place where you got an audience and you can just perform like yeah, you want to yeah, perform. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. With trickery. Yeah. I'm going to say it. Yeah. With trickery. Yeah. I'm sitting there looking at TikTok videos and I'm like, no, you can't do that. You can't just. Right. Just. But they, listen, it, you know, they, they, we all went from what they call that airbrushing, mm-hmm. photographs, mm-hmm. to video clipping. Right. To where it looked like things are. Not what they appear, I know that. All right, that's right. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so, it's folks out there that's living a facade. Yeah. I have a social media facade. I was using, you know, I've used Zoom a couple of times, but on my job, we have what we call, um, uh, what is that called? Golly, I can't Teams. think of the name. Teams. Teams. Teams, thank you. <laughs> These people use the same thing I use. <laughs> but when you do a meeting, right? You can go and get a background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you ain't gotta have no green board. Mm-hmm. 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 Nope. The way this is set up in, in this zoom is that it'll put any background behind you. Mm-hmm. You can look like you sit in the office overlooking uh uh Lake Erie. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Or look like you're in Hawaii. Right. And your office is looking out on the beachfront. Then they got to where it looks like office. Like you got a real nice office. I said, Lou, I wish my office did look like this. <laughs> right, right. And I sat and I thought about this. I said, just think, just think that if the media can do that yeah. with a, cause I can do it with the push of a button, me, myself. Right. My, 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 listen. Exactly. My boss don't know where I'm at. Man. <laughs> Only sounds are gonna give me away. Yeah, yeah. I have to be sitting out the backyard, mm-hmm. but it looked like an office behind me till they hear the birds chirping. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying to yeah, you? Yeah. So think about it. If they can do stuff like that with the push of a button, just think what they can edit and put out there. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is why yeah. I say to you: you better wait on the Lord so He All can right. tell you what's really going on. Mm-hmm. You better yeah. wait on the Lord and hear what He has to say about a situation and a circumstance. Because things are being maneuvered and manipulated for us to see yeah. certain things to get a certain reaction from us. Mm. I believe that with my whole heart. I got a word for y'all today. I'm about to go, but listen, I'm about to go ahead and close because the Lord gave me a word. I, I, he told me I could release it today. He gave it to me in March, and I'm going to release it today. Uh, two Lord. months and one day, three days. Yeah, two months and two days later. Listen, these effects that we're going to see is that when we wait upon God, we're going to see his providence. We're going to see his provision, yeah. and we're going to see his promise that he made. Right. Right. Now, the enemy knows that God made you a promise. Right. You know how the enemy knows God made you a promise? Because yeah. God has made every believer a promise. But the problem is that too, much, too many times we be in our prayer time, and God give us a prayer time promise, right. and we won't keep it to ourselves. Right. We want to tell Tom, Dick, Harry, and Sally Mae and everybody about it. And so now you're not even operating in silence. Everybody know, including the enemy. Yeah, right. So you know what he does? He's a replicator. He's a duplicator. But he's also a saboteur. So it looks like, you know, God is operating, then it goes awry. You're like, well, God done messed up. And when God done told you something, you stick with it and keep it to yourself and continue to praise the Lord for it 
and 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 you'll see as things they'll start things will start happening toward yeah. that you say, oh yeah, we're moving that way. Hmm. You can praise him. Yeah. God, that's why we're supposed to wait for God to give us a testimony and tell us when to testify. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. I know the scripture says that we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and our testimony. Uh -huh. I'm going I'm to teach that one day. But let me tell you something about when you give a testimony for God. He should be the one that's saying, testify about this. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I can get the glory. Yeah. Yeah. Too many times we testify to come back to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come back on me. It looked like, oh, you just, you know, you just said, you know, God is, God, I'm just so good that God does that. Well, listen, God is just good, period. He never stopped being good. He, he can't be stopped being something that he is. Amen. Now, you on the other hand, I ain't talking about you. I'm not talking about nobody. You still in Psalms 37? Yeah. Amen. Did we go to 34 yet? Mm -mm. You've been waiting on me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, keep on. If you Just like you waiting on me, let's wait on the Lord. Look what it says right there. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he will do what? Exalt, Exalt, you. Exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. That's why I say the Bible tells, I think it's Psalms 37. Is that right? Is that 37 in verse 1? I'm almost sure it's what it was. Is that the one? To fret not because of evildoers. Yeah. yeah. Is that what he tells us? Mm -hmm. He said, don't be enemies or workers of iniquity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we said, for they shall be soon cut down mm -hmm. like the grass All right. and wither as the green herb. And then he tells me right here in verse 34, mm -hmm. listen, don't rejoice because he got cut down, though, okay? Right. Because, you know, Proverbs tells us about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Proverbs 24, 17, don't you rejoice? Don't you rejoice? Uh-uh-uh. Listen. He said, wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you. Remember I told you just a few minutes ago, all you got to do is humble yourself. Yeah. Now, if you want to go with that self-entitlement thing, I gave a testimony about that, did I not? Yeah. That, that had nothing to do with me. I had to show y'all how I had to repent because I'm sitting there saying, I deserve this. Yeah. I'm supposed to have this. And I had to be reminded that nothing happens in this earth unless God causes or allows it. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Yea, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. All right. Hey, I am content, John. Hmm. Now, I'm going to be honest. I still want that the one story house. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. So I don't have to climb the stairs to go to bed. But you know what? He has strengthened not just my heart, but my knees. All right. Amen. All right. And my back. And my hip. See, I remember. That's why I thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me go ahead and give you some praise Amen. right there, God. Hallelujah. See, I'm Hallelujah. sitting there talking about Amen. my knees. I remember the time my back was so bad, I had to crawl, crawl up the stairs on my knees. Mm. And yet God healed me. Amen. And just like he did it then, he'll do it again. Amen. When a man's ways please God. That's what I've seen in that. Okay, so stay. I, I, I say stay on. Stay in. The obedience to his will. That's what he's talking about. Keep his way. Uh -huh. Keep his way. Stay obedience to his will. And you're going to see the result of the wicked. He ain't going to exalt me. He's not going to exalt me if I don't humble myself and be obedient to him. Mm. He exalts those that walk according to his will so that he can be glorified. You understand? Mm -hmm. While we are watching, God is going to prosper us. Nothing. No matter what you see goes on with the evil doer or any other doer, it can't compare to what God has promised us. You better wait on the Lord. The Bible tells me that eyes haven't seen, nor ears heard, nor has entered to the imagination of man of what God has prepared for those who love him. And the Bible tells me that if I love him, I'll keep his commandments. I'm in the word right now. I don't know. I don't know about y'all. I'm not just giving you popular opinion. Yeah. Zephaniah 3 8 says something like this The Lord tells us to wait for him. Uh -huh. What you think about that? The Zephaniah 3 8. And you ain't got to go. How about I go for you? Y'all don't mind me going, do you? Mm -mm. Bishop, you're going to beat me down, ain't you? I know because you got them. them uh, Bible uh, drill of fingers. <laughs> yeah, you got them Bible drill of fingers. While I'm trying to find him, I already found him. You know, <laughs> Zeph and I ain't got us about two pages. Right. 
That's how three eight says this right here. That's why we want y'all to try to be hurt. Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation. Now, right here, I was reading that bitch. I said, sound like God is rapping. Hmm. It do. And all my fierce anger and all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. But the Lord tells us to wait for him. Let him handle it. Mm. Okay, here I go. Here I go. Some of us, you don't want to wait on the Lord to fix a situation. Lord, you know they just they just it's just so unfair. John talked about that. John said, there's nothing worse than hearing a grown person say it's unfair. Because <laughs> you expect adults to be more mature. Yeah. That's what children say. It's not fair. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. That's not fair. But anyway, some of us look at it like that, and we say this right here. Say, you know what? Somebody said, what they say? Try Jesus, don't try me. All right. Mm. Yeah, some folks say that. Try Jesus, don't try me. Mm. Okay? Let me say something to you. I heard in the prayer this morning, that God will fight for me. Amen. That all I have to do is be still. Uh -huh. I'm a man that he's a battle at. Yes. That's the scripture. Yes, In the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. He's a sword. He's a mighty sword. Yeah. Listen, the way the reason that we don't have to fight our own battles, I come to find this, I don't have to fight no way because you know God will have somebody else even fight for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. But you gotta humble yourself. Yeah. Cause God will use other people to fight for you. Mm -hmm. But that's why we gotta wait for him. Let him handle it. See, he knows how to take care of it. He knows the best way to take care of it. The Bible also tells us that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Yeah. So you don't have, no, nah, Lord, I gotta get him back. I gotta get him back. Let me tell you something. I want you to go to Proverbs 24, 17. I made a post this morning about this and we really need to hear this. Uh, Proverbs 24, 17. I, 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 I want to, 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 and this is for leaders in the body of Christ as well as lay person or whatever you want to call yourself. Amen. If you're a child of God, this is for us all. Proverbs 24, 17. Amen. We need to hear this, okay? Mm -hmm. Tell me you're there. Amen. 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 So do not rejoice mm -hmm. when your who? Enemy. When who? The enemy. enemy. Talking to you. Mm -hmm. Do not rejoice. Because, you know, y'all go there and y'all read verse 16. You know, y'all love that verse. You know, a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, thinking that's a that's an opportunity for you to go out there and, and, and fall seven times. No, that's not what that's for. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 18. Lest the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him Ooh, to you. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. It don't say to you. So let me ask you a question. And you answer this for me. I'm talking out there too. To whoever's watching who may watch. How can we possibly see it and come to any type of conclusion as people of God, especially leaders of God, to where we can wish bad upon somebody or get, put word curses on people or say things like, you know, you know what, yeah, let me you know that they, 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 whatever, they don't, they don't belong here no more, you know, blah, 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 nah, uh I don't understand that. That if the Lord says that I can't rejoice when my enemy falls, mm -hmm. I can't let my heart be glad if he stumbles. Then how do we figure it's all right that the Lord has sanctioned us as leaders in the body of Christ or any believer to where you can put your mouth on another believer right. and put a word curse on them or wish bad upon them? And by the way, if you're on your knees praying, telling the Lord that you want something to happen, I need you to go to your Bible so that you can see what God, what Jesus said to the sons of thunder. Hmm. When they said, Lord, let's let, 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 let's call fire down from heaven. He said, you, you, not, you, you ain't no part of this. I, I, I'm not going to be a part of it. 
who, who your dad? Mm. Who, who told? Who taught you that? Mm -hmm. I wanted to put that out there. See, Lord tells us to wait for Him because He knows what's best, and He wants us to wait. If you go to Isaiah thirty eighteen, because I do want you to go there. You need to see this. Isaiah thirty eighteen. God wants us to wait for him because he wants to be gracious to us. Hmm. Ain't that good news, people? Yeah. Isaiah 30, 18. He wants us to wait on him, wait for him. By the way, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I'm like this right here. Can I throw that out there? Thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing that to my remembrance again. While you're waiting on him, you ought to wait for him. All right. Yeah. Can I make that more simple? I say, I just say the same thing, lady. While you wait on him, you ought to wait for him. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by not being idle. Mm -hmm. you, you ought to wait for him. You know, do something for him. Right. Mm -hmm. Serve. Mm -hmm. Serve. For, All right. Do I have to go back to waiter and waitress? Do I have to go back to that? Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying to us. Let me get to 3018 so I can go on and, as, as my bishop say, land this plane with no mm -hmm. pilot's license. <laughs> Did y'all see that on the news? Mm -hmm. No. Uh -huh. yeah. Where well, that young man that didn't have no, the, the pilot got sick, like a serious sickness. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the person, no training, just had the, you know, jumped up there and they mm -hmm. talked him down and he landed and did not crash the plane or none of that. Amen. That's a God hand. Mm. God can pilot. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say, Y'all pray to God help me land this plane right now, okay? Because I know y'all want to land it right now, but just wait just a minute. 30 18, y'all there? Amen. Therefore, listen to this. Therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you. Y'all like that? And therefore, he will be, he, he will be exalted Amen. that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who what? Wait. Mm -hmm. You want to be blessed? Yeah. Wait on the Lord. You want to renew your strength? Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. Amen. You want your heart strengthened? Mm -hmm. Wait mm -hmm. on the Lord. Right. You want the grace of God upon your life? Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Listen to this right here. Job waited on the Lord. Y'all know who Job is? Mm -hmm. Nobody likes to talk about Job, do they? Job 14, 14 talks about, y'all know he waited on the Lord, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that something that God told us coming out of Job that he's going to give us what? Double for the trouble. No, yeah. he did Double not say that. He said <laughs> twice as much. Double for the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> We're not claiming doubles for troubles. We're claiming the twice as much yeah. is what God told us. Job 14, 14, please. And then, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Because God don't have to give me twice as much. I don't have to have twice as much trouble to get twice as much. That's the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. We serve an exponential God. Mm -hmm. mm. You know why I say that? Listen to this. God showed me this a long time ago. Some, you know, it, it, when you see in the, in the Acts, in the New Testament, say God added. God added yeah. Right, yeah. to the church. Yeah. Then you start seeing God multiply. Uh -huh. Multiply. Listen. And you see that multiply because when you look and see two fish and five loaves, that's a mm -hmm. that's multiplication. Yeah, I, I call it exponential. Because mm -hmm. anytime you got more left over than what you started with, all right, mm -hmm. that's exponential. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. You know, exponential is when something times itself, times right. itself, times yeah. itself. I'm sorry. Let me get back over here. What I say, Joel fourteen fourteen. Mm -hmm. I'm there. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will what? Wait. Wait. Till my what? That's awesome. Listen, God won't change for your life. Why is it though that we won't listen? And I say this to us. I'm talking about humanity. We always want to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we have a problem transitioning and change. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I watch this. I watch people fall because when change came, they like, I ain't ready to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, but you always want change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, sister, I always want change. Yes, you do. Let me can I prove it to you. Mm -hmm. 
You always want something new. That's uh-huh. right. That's yeah. right. I wish we could go back to the old days. Mm. That's changed. Joe waited. Why can't I? See, the Lord, he's going to come and he's going to change. He brings about change. Yes, he, does. he makes us change agents, by the way. Mm-hmm. But why is it that we got to learn how to wait on the Lord for him to bring about the change? See, the Lord waits patiently. He waits lovingly. Mm-hmm. He waits contently. He waits faithfully on us. Mm-hmm. Does he not? Yes. Right. yes, he does. I know he did because as we should be waiting on him the same exact way. See, I'm reminded how he waited on me. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk about me. You know, he waited 35 years for me. He waited patiently for me. Mm -hmm. I remember when I got the full revelation of how God waited on me. And I'll never forget that. You know, to where I remember uh, Bishop preached a message to my love should should bring you home. Uh Uh-huh, love should bring you home. And we talked about that movie. What was it? Boomerang? Was that the name of the movie? Was it Boomerang? Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, but yeah, 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 Tony yeah. Braxton had the song say, Love should have brought you home right. last night. Yeah. I know that's too young for some yeah, of y'all, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And right. then, okay, then it's also too secular for some of you sanctified yeah. folks. Right. But I've got a revelation oh. that when Bishop was sitting there, and I remember that movie well from my, from my, my secular days, right? And I was sitting there when that woman was sitting there waiting up. For her, 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 her man to come home, in other words. And she told him when he came home the next day after he done went and spent the night somewhere else. With somebody, she said, you know, if you, if, I love you. Said, love would have brought you home last night. Right. I yeah. thought about that when that message was being preached about how the Lord has sat up. Mm. And I know the Lord don't uh. sit up, okay? But the Lord's sitting there like I've sat, right, uh, waiting on something. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You waiting and, 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 and anticipating and you like wondering when and you don't know when. Yeah. But you're sitting there and you're waiting uh, and you're anxious and you're pacing. And you're doing anything to get your mind out the waiting. But God sits there patiently. Yeah. And he sits there and he just waits. Yeah. He don't complain. Yeah. He don't cuss. He don't fuss like I used to do. He just sit there and he waited and he waited and he waited and he waited. 37 years. Mm. 35 years for me to make up my mind to come home. The locks hadn't been changed. He waited. Why can't we wait on God? Mm-hmm. And while I'm sitting there waiting on the Lord and he had nothing but the best for me. Mm-hmm. And I thought about how many nights I sat up and waited on me. How many nights I was sat up and prayed for my children. Mm-hmm. Because heart was troubled. Yeah. And I didn't mind being there. Until I grew. The Lord told me, say, I don't sleep. And I don't slump. You give it to me and trust me. And wait on me. This is what the Lord is saying to us today. And even those of you that may be watching, or even in this room, God waits patiently, Mm -hmm. lovingly, Mm -hmm. contently, Mm -hmm. and faithfully for us to make our decision to come on home to him. So some of us need to be still and wait on the Lord. Other of us, God and waiting on us too long. And it's time for a decision. And a decision needs to be made. The Bible says that when this day, don't you harden not your heart. For day, today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. He's telling us, and you hear him, you, you, you sense the unction saying, it's time for you to come on home. Mm-hmm. Let me take over. Let me fight that battle. Let me take care of the word 
and the strife. See, while you're trying to be a peacemaker, you ain't met the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. All right. While you going and buying a peacemaker mm -hmm. to give you some peace, mm -hmm. you still ain't got it. Because only God can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm -hmm. Because he told you he left the peace with you. He left his peace with you. So this is how we do this today. Micah 7, 7. And I'm going to read that to you. Write it down. Micah 7, 7. It says something like this. Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Hmm. Now, if I hear his voice, I'm not hard in my heart, and he hears my prayer. And it's real simple, something really, really simple. Not hard at all. It's real simple. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, By confessing my mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believing my heart, that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. He said, because with the heart, I believe unto righteousness, but with the mouth, I confess upon salvation. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 13, that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. and so you hear him right now saying, I've waited patiently, faithfully, for you to just give your life to me. And it's not hard. It's not hard. Up. And it's not scary. And it's not spooky. It's the best decision we'll ever make in, our, in this life. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it's the best decision because it's going to make a difference. Whatever decision we make here will, will make a difference about the life mm -hmm. that comes next. Because right. mm -hmm. there is a next. Mm -hmm. But it's real simple. Simple prayer. Father, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on my behalf. That's what you and I realize that I'm a sinner. Yeah. And I needed that Jesus to come to, to die for me. I need a savior. Because only his pure blood could wash away my sin. He that knew no sin became sin that I may become the righteousness of God right. in him. And so Lord, I received that gift right there of salvation. So I confess that I'm a sinner, but I don't want to sin no more. I return. I repent of my sin. Yeah. I come right now asking for your forgiveness and asking Jesus to come and be my Lord and Savior, to reign and to rule in my life from this day forward. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit, the comforter that Jesus left here for us. So that he can lead, guide, and direct me into all truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to determine myself mm -hmm. to follow you all the days of my life. And it's only in Jesus' name can this be possible. Just that simple. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, you said yeah, that yeah. prayer sincerely, we rejoice with hallelujah. you. We say hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You, Jesus. Hallelujah. As I said earlier in this message, it's not so much what you say out your mouth. But it's what's in your heart because yeah. God looks in the heart. Mm -hmm. So with sincerity of heart, if you said that simple prayer like that, the Bible tells you that you are now a child of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Now, just like you made that, you got to make this thing public. Mm -hmm. You got to do something. Tell somebody that you gave your life to Jesus today. Get your Bible and then go and see by the unction of the Holy Ghost because he's going to tell you where to go and unite yourself to a Bible-believing teaching uh, fellowship, church, where, God, where Jesus was exalted, and the Bible is the base of everything. Mm -hmm. It's the foundation of everything, the Word of God. Now, if you've done that, we also want to share in that salvation experience. Go ahead and, in the inbox, send us your name and your mailing information. We want to send you some literature talking about your salvation experience today. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we want to be able to pray with you. We want to be able to pray. We want to know about, listen, if you don't want the literature, that's fine. If you just, just throw in your inbox, say, hey, I accepted Jesus today. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. As I'm going to pray right now, 
we're praising God. The Bible tells us that all the hosts of angels, heavenly hosts, rejoice when one sinner gives his life to Christ. And so we rejoice as well. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you right now for every yielded, willing heart today that this word has penetrated hearts, not just today, but for whatever they may watch this recording. We believe, Father, that your power, it, it, it goes, it transcends time and space, Lord. So we believe right now, Father, that that one or many that's given their life, we pray right now as we come along with them, Father, that the Holy Ghost will guide them to somewhere where they can be nurtured in the Lord, that they grow up and become disciples, Lord. We also come against the enemy on every hand trying to steal this word right now, Father. We bind his hands, but more so we bind his tongue in the name of Jesus, that he will speak no condemnation on those that love the Lord right now. The Bible tells us that there is and those that are in Christ Jesus. So, Father, right now, settle it in their hearts that you have accepted them and that you're going to help them, Lord, that you are there as a very present help for them. And we declare and decree that it is so right now. Now, Father, go before them. I pray for wherever you send them, Lord, mm -hmm. that they will be fitting right into where they can grow and mature in the Lord. I pray for their family members, Lord. I pray for anybody that, that's around them, Lord, that they begin to give their testimony to it. They will hear it, and they'll ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And it's all for your glory, God. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Beloved, we thank you so very much. Let me move back on this side over here. On behalf of Bishop Stevenson and the rest of this body of believers, we thank God that you joined us today on this, uh, 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 I almost said telecast, on this time, during this time today. We count it joy that you come and picked us today, mm -hmm. or the Holy Ghost more so, sent you this way to, to, to worship with us. We hope that you will join us again, whether it be at Wednesday night, 6 p.m. Bible study, or next Sunday, Lord willing, at our uh, 1145 worship service. We love you, Delight. We pray blessings upon you. And everything that concerns you, we know the Lord will perfect it. Until we see you again, God bless you. And let the Lord watch between us while we're absent one from another. Come grow Go with in us peace. and come grow with us. Amen. Amen.